Hello fellow Fay, it's She the Writer here to share my lifelong obsession with storytelling and today I'm going to tell you about how to read as a writer. How do you read as a writer? Is it basically the same thing as being a reader? Can you even hear me because my cat is drinking water in the background and I think he's making a lot of noise. I'm just gonna let my cat keep lapping away there. He's super old. How to read as a writer. How often should I read? What should I read? Etc. First of all, there's some tips and tricks you probably don't know. Now your local library has a very magical person. This person is called the Reader's Advisory Librarian. Your local library has at least one Reader's Advisory Librarian and this is someone whose career it is to research books, find out what's happening in the market, and read books, and review them, and make recommendations. Not only that, but if you're a writer who is looking to write something a little more commercial, or maybe you're self-published and you want to write a lot of books in a row, or anything like that, you want to know where a trend is going in a certain genre, you can talk to your reader's advisory librarian, and they will tell you where the market is, is going. They can tell you, this is really popular in YA right now, or this kind of fiction is really doing well, or this length of book is doing really well. So your Reader's Advisory Librarian has that information, and they can tell you what book to read. All you gotta do is tell them, I'm looking for this genre, or you can even tell them, I'm writing a novel like this. Do you have anything like this to read? Or if you're researching a topic, they can give you a really good recommendation. So that's my first tip. Go to your local library, ask about their Reader's Advisory Librarian, see if you can email them, or meet up with them real quick, and I guarantee you they can have a really good recommendation of a book that you should read. Now, should you just read good fiction? Most writers will say, read everything. That's true, read everything. Read articles. Actually, magazine articles are excellent to read because they have to be written quickly a lot of the time, and they're a lot shorter, so you can find really tight writing in magazines. Read novels. Read nonfiction. Read essays. Read things from different generations. Read current fiction. Read past fiction. Read books that are a lot alike. Read books that are different. Yes, do all of that. That said, I've always been of the belief that if you find something you really like and you want to read more of that, that's totally fine. You're not obligated to read certain things because you're a writer. I felt that way, and sometimes it was worth it, sometimes it wasn't. I found that as a teenager about... Eh, maybe maybe nine years into my writing journey that reading a lot of not so great writing was actually good for me. I learned a lot from it at the time and it helped me to learn where I had grown because just as you need to know what you're not doing right in your writing you also need to know what you are doing well and sometimes reading books that are not very good can help you do that. So read everything. How often this is another question that I get a lot. How often should I read? How much time should I be spending reading? That's a really good question. As writers, we love to read and we can just get caught up in that and then we end up using a lot of our very precious writing time to read and we say, well, it's part of the writing process. And it kind of is, but you have to manage it. Um, what I have found works for me and works for a lot of writers is to do things sort of seasonally. Sometimes when I am in between projects, I spend more time reading um, than I would ordinarily. I still spend a lot of time writing, but I maybe spend more time reading. Um, whereas if I'm deep in the throes of a project and I don't want the voice of what I'm reading to influence my writing at that point, if I'm in like my second draft, then I maybe stay away from it a little bit. And for me, I try to read multiple things at the same time so that there is no writing voice that sort of dominates my voice, if that makes sense. And a lot of writers do that. You don't have to do that. Kudos to you. If you can actually manage to read one book at a time, I don't even... I, more power to you. Clearly, you have some self-control. When you find yourself in that scenario, however, when you start reading a book and you just love it immediately, and you can't put it down, don't put it down. Keep reading it. Become enthralled. If you sacrifice your writing time because you like it that much, that's totally okay, and here's why. You need to do that because that is the ideal experience you want your readers to have. So stay connected to that experience that when you find a book you love so much you cannot put it down, it becomes your life every waking moment you want to read that book. When you find that experience, lean into it and don't try to like discipline yourself around it because it'll help you stay connected to the best possible outcome 
for your own work, which is that someone picks it up and they start reading it and they just, they can't put it down. It's all they want to do with their leisure time until it's done. That's what I have. Thank you for watching, my friends. If you like this, please share it. Quick shout out to all of you who have been messaging me about my short story. I can hardly believe people are actually reading it. I put a link in the description. It's called Say You're Sorry by Aya. If you are the first YouTuber to put a review on there, it doesn't have to be a good review. Either. I hope it will be too bad. I'll give you a shout out on my channel and I will read some of your writing in an upcoming video. And if you're not confident about your writing, that's fine. Or if you're working on something that you want to edit, I'd be happy to read part of it in a video and go in depth in the video and do some editing. I promise I won't be too mean. So that is my challenge to you. I will leave a link to the short story in the description. Some people are confused because it's on my website, but it's also on Amazon doesn't matter to me where you want to get it. I tend to put the Amazon link in there because that way if you want to review it, it's there it is. It's in the Amazon link. But it's basically the same. So thank you, thank you. I, I can't I can't believe there are people actually like reading it. Thank you so much. It's all connected, my friends.